Hello and welcome to another edition of SCFC Fan TV Thursday Night Live. I've uh, got a feeling this could be quite a lively show based on what's happened today um, and over the past few weeks where we haven't been on. So, Happy New Year, everybody. I think it's the first one we've done this year. Uh, joining us tonight on the show, we've got, as we always say, the best looking lad on the stream, <laughs> Jack Shales. Sorry, sorry, Mike, not you. <laughs> happy Thanks. New Year, mate. There we go. Thanks for the call. Thanks for the compliment, Wayne. Thanks very much. Yeah, happy New Year to uh, to you three, and happy to everyone. Happy New Year to everyone on the chat. Yes, plenty to talk about tonight. Um, obviously, the main topic is going to be a certain game coming up at the weekend, but um, we'll uh, we'll have a bit more to discuss about the other games as well at the start. Only briefly, I think we need to touch on them a little bit. The Christmas games as well, but yeah, happy New Year, everybody. Nice one, too. Also on the short night, we've got Emma, long time no see. Happy New Year. How are you doing? Happy New Year to everybody, everybody watching. I'm all right. You know, plodding along, work, life, gets in the way. I haven't been on for a while, but I'm back. Good to see you back. Good to see you back. And also, last but not least, we've got Mr. Mike Chapel. Mike, Happy New Year to you as well. How are you doing? Yeah. I'm just glad you didn't say the not so good looking one, you know. <laughs> Challenge that title. Uh, not so bad. I'm a bit ill, so I apologise if I accidentally mute and leave it muted. You'll have to give me a wave because I'll be coughing in between sentences. Well, you've been talking to Terry, have you? Terry, you're bad now. That's it. The joys of the Christmas period. The joys anyway. of what kids bring home, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, you can get involved in the in the show by putting your comments um, in the comments section. There's already quite a few in there like I expected there would be. Um, I am expecting... Quite a few Newcastle fans being here tonight for some reason. Um, last Palmer's Matt, which is even lads FTM. Ellie Anderson says it's fair to see you're going to have a few one here tonight. Ben Allison says good evening, everyone. Jimmy, evening, are lots to talk about. Brian Scorsia, Matt M says, how are the lads FTM? Palmer's Matt, and there again, let's talk about the trade at the club. Jimmy says, unbelievable. Jeff, Brian Scorsia, Matt, says, last Palmer's you talk in KLD. How else could it happen if the owner wasn't okay with it? Emma's in there, evening, guys. Brian says, evening, Emma. Um, Ryan McCormick, even Sunderland supporters, how are the lads? David Jones, let it rip, fellas. <laughs> a lot of angry people out there. Ben's in there again, evening, Emma. Kia Morris says, it could be an interesting evening. Sexy Ian says, hi, Emma. Sexy Ian. Ian says, KLD out. David Jones says, I'm a Bolton fan. I think what's gone on is disgusting, this is the least. Brian's in there again. Has Terry put a video concerning this, or is he too pissed off to push the record button? Well, I've got one out there. I've got a rant as a short, so if you want to have a look at that, that's quite interesting. It's only 60 seconds, but it's a, it's a bit of a rant. Marion Trout says, hello, everyone. Happy New Year. How are the lads? And Mickey Max is in there. The idiot KLD has made a statement too little too late. Hope the crowd wait till after the game to voice the rage and anger against the club's owners. Don't want it to affect the team on the day. Well, he's got a good point, actually. Um... Already, we've got 108 people watching. If you don't mind, hit the like button as well. We always try and get to 100 likes before the end of the show. Um, but we've got a touch on this afternoon's, you know, antics first before we briefly touch on the games over Christmas. So, Jack, you know, this that's come out this afternoon about the Black Cats bar, you know, being redecorated with all the, the mag stuff. And I think there's been a statement being put out from the club since then to take it down. But for me, the damage is already done. I was raging earlier on when I seen it kind of. Uh, on social media there's only us would do these type of things you know would any other club do it for this for it for a derby game would rangers do it for celtic you know would Liverpool do it for everton it's an absolutely crazy decision from from the, the club and you know what's your thoughts on all that and this afternoon yeah massive error of judgment wasn't it i mean read the room type thing and it was a it was a horrendous decision from the start um, my personal opinion was I know the mags are entitled to 15% of the crowd. I think we should have just given them the normal allocation. We should have put it down to our safety issues. Uh, Northumbria Police and someone have got together and you only get your normal 3,000 or whatever it is that we give away supporters. Now, the mags would have probably said we're entitled to 6,000, but hard lines, you know, we, we have to manage the, the, the game as best as we can. And we could have done that from a safety perspective. Not only have we allowed them the full allocation to give them, you know, a section of the ground that's Sunderland and then to top it all off, the icing on the cake to take down all Sunderland memorabilia, which I can sort of understand because it's liable to get smashed and, and, and damaged and things like that. I can understand that. But to put Newcastle-related things up, I mean, it's just how on earth can that possibly have ever gone down well? I mean, surely someone at Sunderland has the oversight 
before that decision is made to go, hang on, this is going to go down like a lead balloon. It's a terrible decision. The fans are going to kick off. The only positive from it is that we look like we've quickly rectified the issue. We've gone back on it and says, look, there's been a big error. Apparently, it's been taken down now. I've seen photos where it's blank again. So if that's some consolation, possibly the damage, like you say, Wayne's probably already been done yeah. because fans are kicking off and rightly kicking off. I mean, nobody's saying that, you know, Newcastle can't have fans there, but to bend over like we have and allow them free reign of our own home ground in a derby game, the first derby at the stadium like in, what, eight, nine years, it's a massive error in judgment. Um, and yeah, the only like you say, the only positive is that it it's, looks like it's been taken down. Hopefully that's that's the finish of it. And I mean, it's, it's going to be a massive talking point, but hopefully it doesn't colour the, the game too much and we can sort of get on with trying to, trying to win what's, going to be a very difficult game of football but yeah it was a whoever thought of that real, real questions need to be asked well there's, there's going to be somebody made a skateboard in there i mean apparently this the, they've been letting their unsupervised which i didn't buy for one second you know nobody guns in wash under football club unsupervised especially if you're a stranger and if you are what they're playing at um but do you think it's working in our favor it's kind of took the focus off the off the team off the actual match all afternoon has anybody been tired of the game all afternoon I don't know because I think it's. I just think it's added a bit of negative energy around the place, way, and I don't think it has helped. I mean, our fans were quite up for it, despite they were obviously going to be the underdogs. But you know, we're in a position as a club now whereby, yes, it's a derby. Nobody hates losing to Newcastle more than me. But where where the we are the underdogs. I know we're at home, but Newcastle are coming at this as huge favourites. Let's be honest, they're in the Champions League last year. They're a league above us. Nobody hates them more than me, but it was always going to be a tough game. But I think before this had happened, there was a real positive atmosphere about the game. You know, we're coming into it with a crack at them. We're going to give them a good chance, give them a real competitive game. And I hope this hasn't take, taken too much of the edge of it. And there's a bit of a negative spin between the fans and the club now, because I'd hate to think that has an impact on the game. Hopefully it doesn't, but I have a feeling if Newcastle get off to an early early good start and maybe get an early goal, the, the, the crowd could really turn, which I hope doesn't. I hope I'm completely wrong. Um, but yeah, it's just added a bit of a sour note to the game, hasn't it, Wayne? For me, it has. I it has for me as well. Like you say, it's just it's been a shambles from the start, from the ticketing, you know, from us all getting moved from the north stand, and then what's going on after? It's just an absolute joke. Emma, this afternoon, and I know in our group, we were we were all jumping and raging about what had happened when it first came out. Um, what's your thoughts on you know this absolutely crazy decision? What's what's happened? I will try not to swear because we are live on YouTube, <laughs> but it's, it is a damn and utter disgrace. It really is. Why the hell were they allowed unsupervised, right? We might as well just bend over, give them everything they want, roll out the red carpet for them. Christ, I mean, we've given them the black cats bar for God's sake. Our season tickets, have, our season ticket holders have had to move for them black and white cats. Um, Yes, give them the black cat seats, but why give them the black cat bar as well? It's just ridiculous. We're rolling out the red carpet for, for them. Would they do that for us? No. It's all about money in that club. And I think somebody's head has got to roll for this. Because you're telling me KLD was unaware. Who hired the contractor? KLD would have signed off on that, surely. So somebody's head has got to roll. It, as far as I'm concerned, it's turned the whole weekend bitter. I can understand them taking down the memorabilia, like what Jack said, because... The mags, the will, they'll trash it. Especially if they're getting beat or if they're winning. Regardless of the result, they will trash it. And we know that. So I get that side of it. But I just don't get why this is being allowed to happen. And then today as well, we've got the strambolics of the tickets where we're potentially getting fined from the FA over that as well. Yeah, How true that is, I don't know. So to me, it's like piss up brewery together with this club. Right. Do, do you know what oh. I mean? And, I'm going to stop because I'll just rant. <laughs> off, off the pitch, we're absolute shambles. I don't know whether you have saying that this afternoon, but apparently there's, there's some of the tickets have gone out to the Newcastle fans that have, have got League One printed on them. Now, we're going to get fined from the FA because of that, apparently, which is another absolute... Honestly, you couldn't write it. You couldn't write how bad we are off the pitch. Um, Mike, just before I come to you, we'll go back in the chat. Um, Keith Peverley says, to be honest, would you expect Kaylee to inspect every piece of work that goes on? Well... He, he, he's got oversight. He, he should have, he'd have second in command to uh, watching over the the whole show. They can say spot on, Wayne. They can say what they want, blame others and all that. But the damage is done. There's no coming back. Uh, Colin Mitch says KLD will never be trusted again. KLD out. Um, Las Palmas Maps says don't think KLD any idea this was happening. 
Um, the Inter shouldn't have happened in the first place. Um, another one saying KLD didn't know. Marion Trout as well said Jack should never have happened in the first place. John Ruddick, some someone needs to be made responsible. Well, what will happen is there will be some innocent person who will end up losing his job hours. That's what happened. Um, Colin Major, I think that this pile of shite in the end, KLD is the owner and the book stops with him. Um, and so it continues. Um, David Stevenson makes a good point. We just need to get behind the team on Saturday. And then after the weekend, the board need to answer for this. But let's focus on the match. And cheers, lads. On with no negativity. Well, that's the thing. And, you know, the, all the talks, the, the talks being distracted away from the game. Mike, I know you're not feeling very well. But, um, you know, what's your thoughts on, uh, on this absolute shit show this afternoon? I'm the voice of reason, as always. <laughs> so, I mean, you can, we can blame everyone. They, coming up with terrible excuses, there's no excuse for that. We, we all know that's a lot of crap, that it was some unsupervised guy. What it was was KLD or whoever had an idea, let's do this. They've started to do it. They've got feedback instantly, obviously, from everyone in the fan base, and they've realised they've made a mistake. Instead of biting the bullet saying, hold their hands up they're, they're, they're trying to pass the book obviously but Kale we, we can't jump totally on his back he's never experienced a derby and you could tell anybody who's not a Sunderland fan how much passion's involved but till you've lived it you don't know so he probably doesn't know the damage something like that would cause in his head at the time he's probably thinking we're hosting a Premier League club let's make an effort so that's the only slight air of like you know, let's, let's see what else he does before he, we he absolutely burn him, you know. Uh, but I've anyway, my sources, I'm not telling you who my sources are, but my sources tell me the whole thing was Bradley Dax's idea. <laughs> I'll leave that there. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a conspiracy theory. You've never heard of one. Um, but for me, it, it just it reeks of, of KLD trying to make money. That's, that's it for me. That's why he's given all of them, charging them 500 pound a ticket, no, it's an absolute shambles. Emma, have you got the statement of what, what's come out this afternoon from from the club? They've put kind of a hastily put together a statement, didn't they? Yeah. So Sunderland AFC acknowledges that a serious error in judgment was made in relation to the Black Cats bar earlier this afternoon. We apologise to our fans for the understandable concern they have fairly voiced in response, and this sentiment is shared by the club's ownership group and board of directors who have requested an immediate review is undertaken to determine how this process unfolded. A direct decision has also been taken by the ownership group and board of directors to return the space to its original state. And we once again apologise to our supporters. This was not addressed sooner. Uh, again, I'm not I'm not buying that either. I, I, I think he's not about it. I, I really too, little, yeah. too late. <laughs> yeah. Jack? I mean... Even if even if didn't know, he, why is he placing his trust in people that ultimately can't be trusted? That's just as much of a worry for me. I mean, if if he's allowed that, then obviously that goes without saying that's completely bang out of order, and he doesn't understand the Sunderland fan base that there'll be such a negative reaction, which is a worry. But if he's like if he's allowing people to make those decisions, and those people underneath them are making those decisions, then that's even more of a worry because it tells you that he, he doesn't have any control, and he doesn't have any control over the people that he's meant to be controlling as well. Do you know what I mean? Even even them are doing you know what they say, or he doesn't have any understanding so that's just as much of a worry for me well that's it you know when you when you look when i was doing some research for one of my videos of the week and when was the last time we actually heard from kld on a on an interview the last video i could find was when he took over the club so i didn't know if he's done any other interview, interview since then i know he's been on talk spot and what have you but has he actually given an interview about the club since then i've never seen him so that's how far what touch he is mike you're on mute. <laughs> Don't I tell knew it happened. I knew it happened. <laughs> Is it not unusual? Do you not find it very unusual that it's took the fan feedback and the social media to trigger this, pulling this down? Surely the amount of staff running around that stadium that are tied to the club and they've got close connection with the club, someone must have said something. Well, this is it. I mean, one. before it, it got out to the public. That's it. If there'd been if there'd been no fans backlash, it would have it would have steered. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. Emma? I've got a concern. Obviously, this has been leaked today. So, <laughs> sorry, has KLD approved it? What's not to say that come Saturday morning he's going to have somebody in that stadium at 7 o'clock in the morning doing it again, 
for the sake of the Newcastle fans, and we won't find out literally before kickoff. And there's nothing that we could do apart from boycott the game, which we're not going to because of the type of game it is. What's the backlash then going to be after the game if this is if this happens again before the weekend? Well, this is it. I mean, you know, what else have they done in the background? We didn't know, do we? It's just an absolute sham, was like from top to bottom. After, after seeing the reaction from the fans, if he did that, he hasn't got a, two brain cells to rub together. And, you know, I, I, I can't see that happening purely for the fact he would get absolutely lynched. But, Jack, but if he, go on, Ed. no, go on, Jack. Oh, I was just going to say, but but if it was just an isolated incident, you could, yeah, I mean, it's un, indefensible, but it, it's the fact we've had now sort of a second that not a lot of people agreed with Tony Mowbray. And um, we had the two weeks whereby we didn't have any really appointed and then appointed somebody that we appointed and said, oh, yeah, we've always wanted him as a target. And he, obviously, <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was a lie. We had yeah. the whole city problem where the whole city tickets went on sale to everybody and there was season ticket holders with high value loyalty points that didn't get that. And then the fiasco with Newcastle being given the North Stand and then this, it's like a catalogue of errors over the last six or seven weeks whereby now a lot of the good feeling that KLD and the ownership probably had has completely evaporated, hasn't it? You know, do you know what I mean? It's like four or five things in the last month or six weeks or so and it's and it's now suddenly whereby we are starting to question them a little bit more and there are, there are people, a lot more people that are now suddenly saying that this is unacceptable and they want them to go. I mean, I've been defending them as much as I can, but I just can't defend them on this one. There's absolutely no way I can defend that decision that they've made. I think overall they've been more positive than negative since they've come in, but this is just, there's no defending it. No, 100% agree, Jack. I think, I, I really think that there's not much coming back from him from this. I think he's just, he, he basically took the took the fans' his pants down. He has, he's, he's just shafted us, big style. Just been, you know, and I, I, I think he's going to be struggling to come back from it. But like you see here, it's already putting these little statements out on social media. You need to come and front up to things like this. You know, it's already putting, you know, releasing statements of God knows what, and somebody get the sat over. But damage is done. Damage is done. Uh, Mike? If we sign um, Ahmad and um, Villa, will we all forgive him? Uh, oh. anyway. We know that's not going to happen anyway. Did so. you see that big <laughs> flying in the sky there? <laughs> um Mark Waddell. I'd rather have them other two bloody idiots in charge of work in, given what's bloody happened today. Well, Christ, they wouldn't have done that because they know what it means. That's, that's an entirely different show, that topic of debate. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been reading before we come on air that Mr. William Story piped up um, trying to get out on the Sunderland fans' good side by saying that only uh, the Newcastle fans should be out in the car park with no roof. <laughs> so, of course, that went down well as well. So, um, Mark Waddell. Guider says, where's the investment stadium looks dirty? The concourse is grease dripping from the structure. The club shop is tiny. Ticket office is diabolical. Public reasons are zero. We are KLD's player thing. Well, I, you know, there's a lot of people tend to agree with that now, I think. Um, remember what KLD said about Donald and Metvin? He said they were cost-cutting. Christ, what's he actually done? It's 10 times worse than that. He has disgraced the club purely for extra money. Um, Lindsay Softley, don't be daft. This, this would, it would happen again. Uh, Reese wants to sat the board, you know, they kind of continue all the way down. They are managing certain recruitment as people over the cracks. So, we've touched on that. We'll, we'll move on now to the briefly on the Christmas games before we talk about the you know the, the massive game come at the weekend. So, Jack, what was your thoughts on our Christmas period? We had the, the four games, didn't we? Coventry, Hull, Rotherham, Preston. Um, Michael Bale's first game in charge, Coventry didn't really start very well. Um, the worst possible start that he would have wanted. But since then, we haven't been too bad. So what's your thoughts overall on, on our Christmas games? Yeah, I'll try and keep it brief. I know obviously the main topic is going to be the Newcastle game. So I'll try and be as brief as I can. Um, Coventry was really, really poor. Um, we we were. I mean, I don't think it was a 3-0 game, but we were punished for every mistake. We were sloppy. It was a really poor atmosphere. It wasn't inside the ground. And yeah, it looked like that point, like there was no going back for, for Michael B. It looked like, you know, after one game we'd made our minds up, he wasn't our man. But thankfully, since then, it has been a little bit better. Um, Hull wasn't the best of games, but we, we kept it tight, which was the main thing. I mean, we conceded three sloppy goals against Coventry. So to go to a better team, probably in Hull, who were in form and keep a clean sheet, that was good. Maybe rode our luck a little bit, but a bit of brilliance from Jack Clark and we got the win. Um, Rotherham was again another more like Coventry. He wasn't the best. We should have been, they should have been out of sight. 
first half. We got lucky, really, that they're such poor opposition that we're still in the game second half. Second half, we got a little bit better when Pritchard's come on. He's been the one player that has really come back into the fold a little bit more, hasn't he, the last few games? And we've seen his value in the final third with his ability to assist and obviously score, which I'll touch on in a minute. We got away with a point at Rotherham. Did we deserve it? Probably not. Um, but we, we, we'll take it. Scrappy, scruffy. Um, and then Preston was pretty good. We kept them at arm's length. Um, got the two goals in the first half. Two really well-worked goals, I thought, as well. Um, particularly Pritchard's good finish. And um, and yeah, we, we seven points out of 12. It's not ideal, but you'll take it. It's a steady start. It's not Nobody's sort of jumping up and down over that, either for Michael Beale, but it's a steady start. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going in the league. Got a tough game after the mad game against Dipswich, but um, we'll focus on that after this weekend. <laughs> well, we will get them get that out of the way first, but on a plus note, you know, Nazari Rusian got a great goal, I thought, on Saturday. I thought, you know, the, Jack, the, ref, the referee, fair play, the ref would criticise them over recent weeks, but referee did great, I thought, let the play go on and Jack Clark did the rest, but the run that Rusian made to get the goal was a, a proper poacher's finish. It reminded us a little bit of, do you remember the equaliser Sheffield Wednesday that we got when Patrick Roberts did that? Drifted yeah. in from the back stick and slotted it in. Reminded us a little bit of that. But no, I agree. The big, big play, you know, big thumbs up to the referee. Fair play to him for allowing the game to go on. And Clark stayed on his feet as well. Sometimes I've been a little bit critical of Jack Clark for now and again being a little bit easy to go over. I know he's running at fast paces and the defenders do give him, give him some stick, but he stayed on his feet, set it up. But Rushen took it well. It wasn't an easy finish that, you know, to get across the defender and get his foot and turn it in. Uh, it was a really good goal. And what I like was we got to the look and we sort of kept them at arm's length without really expending too much energy. You know, we know we've got a massive game at the weekend and they didn't really threaten us that much. It was a solid home win. So, yeah, we'll take it off. I mean, other than the, the really poor Coventry resulting game, seven points out of nine, it's OK. It's a pretty good return and uh, we, we move on, obviously, the weekend. Aye, and uh, it also keeps us in touch with the playoffs and also, which is, which is good, which we thought we were going to head the opposite direction. But, Mike... Thoughts on our on our Christmas period. Obviously, the company game was a was a bit of a shocker, but was you not know, yeah picked up after that. Uh, Coventry, in my opinion, was Michael Dodds's game. Uh, sorry, you know, um, but it it just it just seemed like his formation and the way he was setting up in the previous game. So I don't know if he took his game plan on and just said, "I'll I'll see how this goes." Um, and then obviously Hull. Um, that's when I tore down my Beal poster that was behind me uh, before the game kicked off, just because he was starting Bradley Dack, which I found insane. Um, luckily, somebody shot him. Um, <laughs> so then we went on to Rotherham. Um, Rotherham reminded me of before because uh, despite it being one all, we had like most of the possession um, and the stats looked all right. It was just, again, finishing. Um, so... What this told me is Beal has adapted because it was after that that we started a striker, you know, in a striker's position. With uh, was Job right behind him on the start? It was on the lineups, wasn't he? Um, yeah, Job was behind Rusin on the actual starting 11 for that game, and it just looked like he saw the problem and he adapted. And I'm hoping from Preston onwards now that's the model going forward because. It's clearly worked. Um, all, all in all, we've the defense has improved a lot. I'm still a bit disappointed. I don't think Equus stepped up yet, but Pritchard for me throughout the whole thing has just shown he has to be have a contract to be a number one starting player. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, he's proved he's why he should be in the side. You know, the last two games he's been outstanding. I will say I am questioning his subs a bit. It, you know, um, bringing Barr on, on any game at the moment, I'm questioning. So his, his substitutions leave a bit to be desired at the moment. So we'll see how that goes. I uh, agree. Again, you pro probably dogs will probably have an influence on them, I think, for the for the but I I would agree with you. Um Pritchard's value it was also good to see Agilisia back as well, who I thought did our did our right on Saturday. You would say he's not fit, but would look the side looked a lot more balanced for me on, on Saturday or was it like Monday or whatever it was on those track yeah. days. Um, it was nice, nice to see somebody at the back more than just Ballard, who looked pretty solid. You know, look, look, looked intimidating to come up against. Chat, what you thoughts on Alicia back in the in the side? Yeah, big, big, massive thumbs up from me to have Alicia back. He's 
he's not 100 percent you can see that but even at 70 80 percent i think he's, he's he's a really really good option for us to have he's got that physicality he's got that athleticism that we don't really have very much all over the pitch he's solid i can't see many opposition strikers attackers what you want whatever however you want to categorize him i can't see many of them enjoying coming up against ballard unless he is the center half partnership um or even at left back um you know my thoughts on 09 sometimes he's a bit of a liability and i think we look a lot more solid at the back with the partnership of Alessi and Ballard, if that's what it's going to end up being. So, yeah, the quicker we can get him back, the better. And, um, yeah, I was looking forward to seeing how he does it. I agree. I don't think he looks anywhere near 100%. And, you know, you, you don't expect that when he's had so long out. But he, I think he's a class actor, I really do. Yeah, nice one. Um, 188 people watching, <clears throat> but getting towards 50 likes. So keep hitting that like button if you don't mind. Um, back in the chat before we come to Emma. Um Serious's company was the worst performance since Bolton 6 0. Um, Callum says, going to be a hard game on Saturday and we're a form of shit. I uh, can see it being a boring but scrappy game 2 1 Newcastle. So Callum's a Newcastle fan. I'm not, not booing Callum. We'll have to give him a boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> has, has to be done. Come on, Callum. Now we'll let you off. We should have had the sound effect. We should have had the sound effect. Um, Serious, I'm expecting more from Robert to set him out of the season. One assist isn't enough. Well, he's out, he's out injured now, so with an hour he's going to be back. Um, Lindsay softly says Callum 1-1 one, 1-1 one, 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 uh, one nil Sunderland Clark there's the score predictions in there we'll get them at the end of the show uh, Lewis says how many oh, we'll, we'll not read that one out uh, Callum says worried about Clark can see him causing us problems he's good for the championship uh, what else is in there uh, Jeff thinks Saturday was our strongest team Mark Rodell Gerda says Bo has recently started to worry me he's starting to he was starting to impress so I, um, Emma, our, our Christmas games. You know, what what was your your thoughts on uh, on how we performed? Bale's first game in charge, and then you know what's happened since then. Yeah, well, I mean, going back to the Compton game. To be honest, I never expected we would win against Compton anyway. Um, but to be fair. It wasn't a bad overall game. I think when I had a look at the stats, I think we did have most possession and most shots that game. Um, I can't remember about them being on target, but I never expected to win from them. Um, but obviously, um, I wouldn't have expected to get the seven points from them four games, if I'm honest. I was probably expecting two, three tops out of the four games. So I'm... Really, really pleased with how it went over the festive season, if I'm honest. Um, and we're still we're still in the playoff position, so we couldn't really ask for more. Um, I mean, as for Elise being back, I was quite shocked to see him starting on Saturday because I didn't think he was actually fully fit. Um, but it's great to have him back. I think we need him in this squad, especially at the minute. But then at the end of the day, what other options has he got for the back? <laughs> um, we've got that, and it was good to see Rushin starting as well. And the fact that he's getting a goal, is this now going to give him that confidence to play? I mean, over the festive season for me, Clark, we cannot start a game without Clark at the minute. He's just, he's the main man at the minute. But then Pritchard, the way Pritchard played at the weekend, without Pritchard, I don't think we've got a team at the minute. He's the one that's got the experience. I think he's the driving force at the minute with the team. If that makes any sort of sense. <laughs> right, I mean, I, I don't know whether you, the press comments after the game. I was interested to hear what um, what Michael Bale said about Pritchard. He said Pritchard is, is a big player for us. Um, hasn't been able to play because of a chest infection. So, you know, Jack, does, is that signs of, of things to come that we, we will give him a contract or at least keep him to the end of the season? I mean, I hope so. I mean... Um... Did you say Dak? Dak, sorry there, or Pritchard, I lost track. Pritchard, it might, it might have been, I think Pritchard said he, he couldn't, hasn't been playing because of it. he had a chest infection, but he's a big player for us. So. Oh, yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, I, I, th I thought you were talking about Bradley Dak. Can you stop I mean, swearing, please? <laughs> that's, that's why I was taken aback. I thought, am, am I hearing that right, Bradley Dak? No, um, I agree. Pritchard's value in the team is, you know, we've spoken about it so many times. He's got that quality on, uh, in the final third. He's got that experience. And, you, you know, he just has the ability to just thread that killer pass in behind. Sometimes, how many times have we spoken about on this podcast? We've had all of the play, but, you know, we haven't had that final 
cutting instinct, you know, that cutting edge, you know, instinct in the final final position that you need, either a final ball playing through or a finish. And Pritchard's got that, hasn't he? Do you know what I mean? So it makes complete sense. I know we've got our model. I know that's the way that we're doing things with the young players in development, but there has to be exceptions to the rule. It seems an absolute no-brainer to give them at least a one-year deal or something whereby if he plays a certain amount of games, it triggers another year or something along those lines. I don't know what it is, but he's valuing the team. It, it's absolutely worth whatever whatever he, he wants in wages. So definitely one year for me. Yeah, 100%. Mike, you agree with that? I agree fully, more so. Um, I, I, if you were looking at our club from the outside in and at the performances of the last four or five games, he should be he should be wearing an armband over or nine for me. He's a, he's a leader of that team. And if you were looking from the outside and didn't know who the squad captain was of that team, you'd have picked him out easily. Aye. I'd give him a contract and an armband. That's what I'd do. Aye, good show. Uh, he, he made, when, he's on, when he plays well, we hunt, we hundred percent always play well. You know, he runs, he runs the show. Um, Emma Pritchard, would you give him a new deal? Yeah, definitely, one hundred and ten percent. But to be honest, I think he could be away this winter. But can I make a point? It's four days in. We've still got all our players, but we haven't brought anybody in. <laughs> but no, I, I would give him a new, new deal definitely. And I kind of agree with Mike. Although I'm a big O nine fan. I think that Pritchard sh should have that armband, especially for Saturday. I think he will lead us to be going better things, if I'm honest. I might take the pressure of 9 a bit now. I think he hasn't got to try as much as he does. But um, but I, overall, for me, it's been a good a good Christmas. Not uh, not excellent Christmas, but the disappointing thing was that we had a, a great result at Hull and then you know Rotherham kind of chucked it away. If he, if he had offered us Four points out of them two games, you'd have probably took them. So, if, if, if the weird thing is though, Wayne, if it had happened the other way around, you would be okay, wouldn't you? Exactly, wouldn't it, if, if, we, if we'd gone to Hull and got a battle in one one, and then beat Rotherham one nil or two nil or something like, you'd say, yeah, we're happy with that. But because it happened the other way around, you automatically won six points, don't you? We're all greedy as football fans. You get the three at Hull, and I was the same. I saw us go and get another three against Rotherham, and it wasn't just the, the bad the bad result. It was a really it wasn't the best performance, was it? I mean, a better no. team would have had us out of sight. So yeah, uh, it mixed mixed start would be what I would how I would categorise it for Michael Bale mixed. Aye, probably right. Uh... 200 people watching, which is good. Um, keep hitting that like button if you don't mind. Um, very quickly back in the chat. Sorry, um, Wayne. Oh, like yes. and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Well said, Emma. I'm pleased you're here. See, we've missed that. We've missed that. Um, John Nesbitt's hope we beat the living deal out of them. Fourth round, get a big club. <laughs> um, Keith Pevis has heard that Mowbray is talking to Birmingham about their new manager. Hopefully, he'll take that with him. There's the one for Mike. You'd be happy with that, Mike? Yes, I thought you might be. 100%. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay the fees. I'll pay the moving costs. <laughs> Jim Nesbitt, I think Pritchard's determined to prove no contract extension from management was a crap decision. That's not a bad shout. You, you know, some players could have just down tools and give up, but I think he's wanted to prove a point of why he should be in the side. So, you know, fair play to him. Um, right then. Got a little game coming up the weekend. Been on the cards for weeks and weeks since the draw came out. So Jack, you know, it's it's a massive game. You know, since the last time we played them seven year ago, was it? A lot of things have changed where they are now, and where we are now. Um, we are unbeaten in nine games against them, I think. But you know, what's your overall thoughts going into the game on Saturday? Yeah, we're just I was just going to open with what you said. A lot has changed since the last time we played them. I mean, we've dropped two divisions. Um, Newcastle have been down and then come back up again. Obviously, the takeover they've improved massively. We've gone back over, but we are steadily and slowly improving, not on the rate that they have because obviously we don't have the finances behind us like they do. Um, I'm going to be sort of an Uber Uber Sunderland supporter here and say it was a disgrace that the takeover went went ahead. Should never be allowed, and there's all kinds of things going on that their football club are involved with at the minute that they shouldn't be. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's it, it makes things even worse. Nobody wants to see Newcastle doing well from a Sunderland perspective, but it sort of leaves a bit of taste in your mouth when you know that that's going on in the background. However, don't want to talk about them too much because obviously it's a Sunderland podcast. <laughs> but I just thought I would get that in there. Um, but yeah, I think overall. I'm all for giving them a competitive game and I think we will give them a competitive game because I think this Newcastle team, they are stronger than us, let's be honest. They're physically stronger, they're technically they've got better quality than we have. I think even the most staunch Sunderland supporter would realise that. 
they were in the Champions League last year. We a couple of years ago we were in League One. So I think we, we need to realise that there is realistically there's a gulf between the teams. It's narrowing because we're improving and we're looking at maybe in the next year or two we'll be getting promoted to the Premier League and be able to, to compete within the Premier League. But they are they are quite away in front of us. But in a ninety minute game doesn't mean anything. Do you know what I mean? It, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean as much as it as it perhaps might have over the course of a season. Obviously Newcastle would always finish above us, but as long as we can go there, we can be competitive um and, and really make it difficult for Newcastle, make it a difficult afternoon for them. Hopefully we don't concede an early goal because I think the atmosphere could really turn if it does. And hopefully we keep eleven men on the pitch because I think that's critical against a team like Newcastle if you go down to ten men. It could be a, a really nasty afternoon, so I hope not. But um, yeah, let's let's see what happens. We're going to be the underdogs, but let's let's see how, how we do. Aye, uh, that's it. I mean, I, I was saying earlier about yes, they're on a bad run of form. I think they've the only the won one and lost the last seven, like won one in eight and lost six or seven of them. So they are on a bad run. But the teams that they have been playing against the teams that we've been playing, there's a massive difference. And that, like you say, let's not forget they are a Premier League side. So it's. it's just because they're on a bad run of form, to not say we're going to go and roll an hour, but yeah, I think I think their away record's quite poor, isn't it? When I think I, won, I mean, I know the hammered Sheffield Wednesday and Sep- Sheffield United, sorry, in, in September. But I think other than that, I don't think they've they've won away from home. After they've, they've lost quite a few away games, so yeah, I don't know if that works in our favour or not. <laughs> um, Harley Nixon put a seventy-nine pence in there, so thank you very much. Um, thank you for that. Um, the Nesbitt brothers are in the chat. Welcome to you both. Um. SCFC chat says thank you, Holly Nixon. We've got uh, fire sortings in there. Hello from Detroit, Michigan. So well, welcome to you. Um, world of Lexi Vlogs says there is no club in the world I would have seen decorating the own club for, for away fans and especially for you, for your main rivals, deluded a lot. Um, John Ricks says you have to remember Kirill was Donald's apprentice. He knows it's all about money. Um, John Nesbitt, Callum, bless your cotton socks. And Mick comes if we beat the scum, fingers crossed, and how get the boot. Would we like him to manage us? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> I don't know what your thoughts are on that. You three, would you like any help to be managing us? Can you say me lying dead on the floor? <laughs> I don't. I don't think. I don't think he would ever take it. To be no. fair, when I think he's got Premier League aspirations. So, other than the fact it's the arch rivals, I don't think it's. A, <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's a, a liable. It's it's going to happen. But I think realistically, in terms of a talent as a manager, he's probably got more talent than, than Michael Beale. <laughs> <in my opinion. laughs> Just a little bit in his little tour, probably. I, uh, Mike, in the Saturday, you know, what's your, your overall thoughts on our chances? Really, do you, do you think we've actually got a chance of, of getting a result against them? I mean, as an outside perspective, you you you're against a Premier League team. You're a championship team. It's you're always going to be the underdogs, as people have already said. Um, but Callum, the Newcastle fan in the chat, there has said that they've only won one away game all season, and we know as the derby, but either us going there or them coming here, it's very intimidating for players. Um, the crowd's very vocal. Everything's on the back. Um, Newcastle's not got a great cup run, uh, cup record, and they've lost to teams like uh, Cambridge and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean. It just feels written that we can get a win out of this. And it I'm not like I'm not overconfident with it, obviously. I'm i I'd be just happy if the lads perform, but I can just feel, you know, that everything's starting to line up. Elise is back, Pritchard's on form. We've started a striker. We've how long have we gone without an actual striker scoring? And then he scored in the last game. Everything just seems to be lining up to this point. So I'm I'm quite hopeful and quite optimistic at this stage. Well, I hope I'm right. nervous. <laughs> you didn't really want to get your hopes too much because you know, you know, they are a quality side. But we went to Fulham last year, and and more than give them a game should have beat them down there. I think. Um, yeah. Obviously, the home leg didn't quite go as well, but you know, they are they are got a really really bad record in the cup. I think they've been, they've lost in the third round for the last three years. I think. Um, but Emma, what's your overall thoughts on the game? Do you think you know we should go into there without any fear? I mean, like we've been saying for the last three or four weeks that we've got nothing to lose. The pressure is all on them. Yeah, I mean, my thoughts on the game, I feel physically sick now that we are physically like mm. talking about it. The nerves is like because it's it's a one-off game for us, effectively. It's not like we've got we've already played them this season and they've got the bragging rights, if you like. It's it's a one-off game. 
they have been knocked out the last is it the last two seasons in the third round of the right. FA Cup. Yeah. So that's like, mm, it could be done. We can do it. But to me, it's not about Newcastle's form. It's not about our form. It is who turns up on that pitch for the occasion. It is what team's going to be up for it more. Who, what team's going to have the most passion? What team is going to play the hearts out? I mean, of course, I want to win. We can win and play absolutely crap for all our care. But if we get beat, as long as we have turned up and put a shift in, as long as we've turned up for the occasion, that's all I want from our team on Saturday, as far as to turn up and play with our hearts on our sleeves. I'm the same. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm looking at the game saying we're gonna get battered or we're gonna, you know, hammer them. But I just want us to give them a good game. I just want us to show up and and give a good account of ourselves and give them a good game. That's all. I mean, you know, we are massive underdogs. They make no bones about it, Jack. I mean, we are. We began at the game, massive underdogs. Absolutely. I mean, realistically, if you, it's hard to say this, but if you take the fact it's a derby game out and you look at it, it's a Champions League team last year, a team that finished fourth in the league against a, a playoff chasing sort of championship team. So if it wasn't Sunday and Newcastle, you'd be saying, well, the, the, the Premier League team is obviously going to win. Do you know what I mean? It's only the fact that it's a derby and things can happen and, you, you know, that you've got the rivalry element to it that, you know, we are giving ourselves a chance. Like if we were playing, you know, I don't know, Aston Villa or somebody like that who were, you know, maybe maybe even better than Newcastle, but not far off Newcastle's level, we would be saying that, you know, we're massive underdogs. So I think I understand where everybody's coming from. And I think, I, I don't think we, we, I have a feeling there's not, I don't think we're going to get battered. I think we will make it competitive. I think we are going to give them a game. Um, but I just think we, Newcastle have a lot of quality in the side, and I think one thing that sometimes gets overlooked as well—they are quite a physical team. Newcastle, mm-hmm. you know, they are. They have some big lads in there. You think of the likes of like Botman and Byrne and Joe Linton and Bruno and Shaw. They have some physical big players. We're not that type of team. We're a technical team. We get the ball down and play football. So, I mean, how we're going to cope with Newcastle's physicality? I think we need we need to get it right. And I. I I wouldn't be surprised if you know we have players going down trying to get them sent off because you try and give yourself every advantage in a, in a derby game, don't you? And if if, the, if that means it gives us an eleven versus ten, then who knows? But I think it's I hope we can give them a real good game. But I think it's going to be a real tough tough test. I mean, everybody's talking about our recent derby record and how long we've uh, how long we've played them, you know, how long we've been unbeaten against them for. But I don't think it really really matters anymore because as we've touched on, so many things have changed. Yeah, I, I agree. I think them them past games are out the window. You know, when was the last time we played them? We, we haven't, have we? We've never, we've never played them in the Cup. It's always been league games. So we've always always been in the same league as them when we played them. So it's a, it's a tough one to kind of judge. Um, Mike, you know, do you, would you make, what changes would, would you kind of make? Would you, would you look at when we played Leeds, Early on this season, when Leeds came here, they were, they were favourites to win. They came with a strong side. Dodds played a five at the back. Would you be tempted for to do that kind of thing and, and play a five at the back or three at the back, which is where you wanted to see it? Um, no, <laughs> I, I'd be tempted to change to that. If we if we got a lead, I wouldn't be opposed to becoming more defensive, trying to hold on. I know that's always a nervous game, and usually in a league game, I wouldn't say it, but. For something like this, if we got the lead, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy if they tried to hold on to it. But personally, I'm a strong believer of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I would go with a similar starting lineup as we had for Preston. Um, the only change being Equa's position, potentially, depending on who's fit and who's available. But Equa's the only one that would be tentative whether he starts or not. Other than that, I would go unchanged. Rusin's definitely earned himself as a start. Um, Bellingham was on. Uh, we we know Clark's a threat and Pritchard. It's just all. Everyone else is going to struggle to get into that team. I don't know how you justify taking out anyone from that at the moment. Yeah, I, I think we we just kind of go into the game and and, and try and sit back because we know we will get battered. Um, Emma, you know what's your thoughts on on starting lineups? You know, formation wise, would you look at? Should should we make it so they worry about us, or would you, you know, like what Dodge has done in the past, try and come up with a team selection tactics that, you know, kind of will beat them? Um, the thing is, if we play five at the back, are we going to sit too deep? And I feel that when we sit too deep, we're most likely to concede a goal. 
So are we better just sticking with the team that he put out on Saturday? Because to me, that was a winning side. What, Like, Mike, why change something if it's not broken? Mike, um, so, Sorry, I'm just keeping an eye, an eye on the chat as well. We're just talking. No, there's that many that <laughs> going on. Uh, Jack, for you as well, you know, would you... What would you be tempted for me? I, I just thought the way we lined up against Leeds would looked a lot more solid. I thought it was a, a, a great technical performance, and it might be that if we do that similar type of lineup, might nullify their threat. We know they've got Gordon and, and the like. I mean, we don't know what kind of team they're going to put out. Will the rest players because they've got they've got Man City and Aston Villa coming up after our game? So, will, what will Eddie Howe do? Will he rest players or will he dare play a week inside? I don't think so. I think they'll be going into a pretty strong, if not full strength way. And I think the uh I think they realise that this is a massive opportunity for them to get a win over us because they haven't done it in so long. I know I touched on it, but I think um I think realistically not only that as well, Newcastle my fancy a run at the cups. You know, that they're, they're the same, they've been a poor cup team. We've got the EFL Cup final last year. They, were, they nearly got into the League Cup semi final this year, you know, bar a, a a couple of dodgy penalties from Trippier and uh, whoever the other one was that missed, I can't remember. But the, you know, so they might fancy that, that they can have a cup run this year. So I think they'll be going as full strength as they can. As for us, um, I agree with you, Wayne. I think we need to. I'm not saying bend over for Newcastle, but we need to respect the fact that they are a pretty good team and they are a league above. Regardless of the fact that the Mags, you know, you would normally make them favourites in that scenario, as I touched on. So I think we need to be as sound defensively as we possibly can. If that means going five at the back. With that, we're just in front of the the back five. Then so be it. You know what I mean. And then build from there. We're still going to be a threat on the counter attack. By the way, if we've got the likes of Jack Clark in the team, and, and if if, uh, if Russians playing, you know, and Bellingham, if, if if all three of them play, you know, we we can still get in behind if Newcastle push forward, even though we're the home team. So I think we can still be a threat, but we have to realise that you know we're better attacking in the defensively to try and make ourselves sound because we don't want to open ourselves up too early. And go one or two nil down early on because that'll be a really tough game and really tough atmosphere in in the ground. I I I agree. Um, in regards to the fans, then do you think that you know which way should we approach it? Do you think we should not? I mean, obviously the atmosphere is going to be electric at the start, but should we, we be taking them out to bomb forward or you know do we need to like, take a step back and and try and be calm? I know it's easy easy sitting you're saying that, but. I think I think just get behind get behind them firstly. I mean, if there's any any banners or anything going up, let let them in firstly. If, if they're going to contribute to the atmosphere, let them in. Everyone try and get behind them, you know, and, and try and stay with the team. If we go a goal down, try and try and stick with them. I know it's sometimes difficult if you're second best in a derby game and you're losing the game, but uh, try try and get get behind the team. I think really realistically, we're going to have to admit that Newcastle are probably going to have more of the ball than us. Not many teams come to the stadium like in the Championship, if any, and have more of the ball than us, but that's going to happen. They're going to have more of the ball than us. But just see if we can stay, stay in the game, stay, what would be the word I would use, disciplined. You know, we don't want to see anybody lunging out. And I know we've, we've seen a lot of our fans saying things like, I hope, you know, Tri Hume goes through one of their players and snaps the leg. Well, yeah, that might be that might be good to watch, but it's not going to be any good for no. us if we're 10 men, playing 10 men against 11 in the first half against the Premier League team. What good is that going to be? So I think stay disciplined, stay in the game uh, and, and just try and make it as difficult for them as they can. And if if we can get forward on the counter-attack with the likes of Clark and Rushin in behind and Bellingham, if he plays, um, we, we can still cause them problems. I mean, we always look a threat and I, I don't think Newcastle are that good defensively. So I think we can we can cause them trouble, but just, you know, not 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 go too overboard. All right, good shout. Good shout. Um, Mike, just what Jack's been touching there about, you know, about diving into tackles and what have you. We all know that we've got certain players on the side who like to dive in, like you, like one iron. It lasted me once again that with 10 men. So, you know, what's your thoughts on, on how we should start the game? Do, you, do we get our guns blazing or should we just be a little bit more passive and see how the first 20 minutes pans out? I mean, I don't want to see anyone go off, especially for something as silly or something unnecessary, you know. Obviously, we all know professional fouls sometimes have to happen. It's better than conceding at that moment in time. So we expect some of it. But I'm one of those who I like to see that passion at a derby. You know, I would like the likes of Catamol on a pitch when it was a derby day and players like that. So I think Hume could be in, you know, and players like that could be in their element. As long as they do have that happy medium between 
discipline and passion, you know, and not just turn it into all out aggression and get frustrated with them. But look, we've got some good technical players. You've got the likes of Clark, who's very technical on the run, who's probably going to cause more trouble for them getting cards and stuff like that on his runs than anything else. Um, I, I will be shocked if we don't see a few, uh, a red card or two. Uh, but yeah, I mean, let's be fair. We're, Luton can beat Newcastle, so come on. Well, that's it. I mean, if they've lost against Luton, they've not, you know, Forest beat them at home the, the week. I mean, you know, they are, they are they're in a bad run. We all the seat about they are in a bad run, but the difference in quality is still massive. You know, I think I seen a stat earlier in the week. I think their squad or their team against Liverpool on Monday was like 259 million quid. Our team against Preston was seven and a half. So, yeah. Uh, like I say, that's the it, it is a good position to be in, kind of, because with the underdogs, there's no pressure on us. There's more pressure on Newcastle and Newcastle fans than there is actually on us. So it's actually a, a half decent position to be in. But um I think if we I know Jack's saying they're gonna have the majority of the possession of the ball, but I think if we can, we've been really good at keeping possession. And if we can and we can frustrate them, they will create chances for us free kicks in the right areas, stuff like that. They will they will give us the game if we can frustrate them. Right. I think you're right. I think if we can keep it tight for the first 15, 20 minutes, then, you know, progress from there. Emma, how, how would, you, would you start the game? Would you get up all guns blazing for the first 20 minutes or would you sit back and just, you know, say what, say what pans out and see? I mean, all depends what kind of team they're going to promote, I would imagine. I wouldn't go out all guns blazing, but I wouldn't sit back at the same time. We need to go out and treat this as if it is a playoff final, in my opinion. We need to go out, play the game as we would for a big occasion, like a playoff final for promotion, if you like. But we need to keep our cool. To me, that's the biggest thing is about being disciplined, not losing my heads, keeping my cool. Us fans, we need to, no matter what's going on, we need to keep behind them lads. We need to keep their heads up high. They need to keep their heads up high. I mean, Christ, Pat is saying there's going to be um, O'Nine, Ballard, um, Hume, Elise. They're going to have 6,000 mags right mm -hmm. behind them at one point on Saturday. And we don't want their mags to get them too riled up. So we need our players to keep their cool and keep their heads. Because I am very concerned about who will lose their heads on Saturday. No, Mainly nice. Hume, O'Nine. And Neil with his mouth. Neil needs to keep his mouth shut. My worry and all. Jack? <laughs> I do think that um, touching on our dangers, I mean, we're focusing on the mags and I have, you know, I've, I've brought it up more than anybody else. But looking at where we can get at them, I definitely think that uh, Jack Clark can get in at their, their right back. I know Trippy is not playing. He's had a bad time. I think they've been playing that Livramento at right back, is he? The, the one they got from Southampton? Yeah. I'm not sure he's all that good, to be fair. I think he's a solid Premier League player, but I don't think he's he, he, he's that he's up to that much. I watched him against Liverpool and he, I don't think he's... I think Jack Clark can get at him. I really do. If, if he gets any space or gets him up against him one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so, yeah, I think there are there are options for us. Maybe Bellingham on the counter-attack as well. Bellingham's athletic. He, he, he's running through a lot. Uh, you know, you might get a yellow or might get somebody tackling him and, and bringing him down uh, potentially. So... Um, and also as well, I think we need to be used. I mean, it's 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 obvious, but using the crowd our advantage every time one of them going for 50-50, <laughs> any advantage we can give them, surround the referee, drop them down. You know, if we need to, emphasising where there's been a Newcastle player, you know, fouling anything we can to give us that advantage. Normally, I'm all for playing the right way, but in a derby game, I think I think as long as we can keep our cool and do it, you know. But uh, you know, emphasising where we've got the crowd on our side and. And trying to give us any sort of slight advantage that we can, I'd be, uh, I'd be trying to do that as well. Aye, not, not a bad shout that, Jack. Actually, I think I totally agree with you. I mean, also as well, we've got to look at the referee. You know, Mr. Craig Porter, Craig Porson, he's, he's a, a shot on referee. There's Navar. Um, how is that going to pan out? Well, um, just very quickly, we've got 200, we're 199 watching. We're on 101 likes, so we hit that. Hit the, the hundred likes, so well done. Thank you very much, everybody who smashed that like button. Greatly appreciated. Um, but the referee, Jack, you know, it is we know Porson. We've got a terrible record when he's in trial. We've only won two of the last thirteen games. He's refed. He's he's gonna have to have a good game in in the middle of not, isn't he? 
Yeah, he's got a tough tough job on, hasn't he? I wouldn't like the referee of Sunderland Newcastle game in any circumstances. Uh, well, I probably would because I'll give us about four penalties in the first half. <laughs> like, but, uh, no, but I mean, it, he's got a difficult job on. I think you know, he, he, has, he has, I like a referee that's sort of you know dominates and, and isn't too arrogant with it, but you know he's in control. You know what I mean? I think sometimes you can get referees that hide behind the yellow cards and the. the and uh, you know, but I think as long as the referee, you know, it, it's cliche to say, it, as long as the referee gets the big decisions right, because there's absolutely nothing worse than coming away from a match in a derby game and feeling like you've been robbed by the referee. Um, there's, there's nothing worse. It'd be hard enough to take losing to Newcastle, but losing on a, on a, in a debatable decision will, will really, really sting. So you just hope that he's strong enough and uh, and he gets the big calls right. But uh, yeah, the, the record doesn't. Doesn't sound very good, Wayne, but I wouldn't pay too much attention no. to that, to be fair. Oh, you, you're probably right. That's just, you know, we always like look at these referees and the history. I think, you know, Mike, what's your thoughts on on the referee on, on Saturday? He's, he's got to be strong, hasn't he? and he's got to let the game flow. But he's also got to get a grip of things early as well. I hope somebody sits him down and tells him that and tells him what the game, like this, the history of this game is, so he does let stuff flow a bit and let us actually play. Um, but I mean, I was looking at his stats and they're not all that bad compared to some of the rest we've had have been ridiculously red card happy. He's only issued one straight red card in the last 15 appearances he's refed for. So it says to me that he, he has got something about him, you know, in whether you give out a hundred yellows or, or not, it's, it's irrelevant to me. We need to keep it 11 men on the pitch at all times. So as long as he's fair. We've had refs where where people get sent off just for asking questions or shouting something, as we know. Um, and we, that's what we don't want. We, as long as he can handle a big pressure game. And looking at the fixtures, he's actually refed, you know, Villarreal, Ajax, uh, games like that. Um, he did the Burnley City game. Um, he's done quite a few of the Premier League games. So he has managed quite a few intense games i was just trying to see off the if he'd done any da he did liverpool everton as a derby so he the has only, had that kind of atmosphere maybe the only reservation i've got about these premier league referees ref in this type of game is the rely that much on var he hasn't got that now so he's gonna have to make decisions for himself where in the mm. premier league them them are took out of his hands so that's yeah. that's the thing um emma just before we do scott predictions what's your thoughts on the referee you know, he's got to have a good game, hasn't he? He's got to have a good game, but then as well, his officials have got to have a good game. It's not just about the referee, in my opinion. The officials have got to be on the ball as well. I mean, as far as Craig Post goes, like you see, he hasn't got far to rely on. And our past record, he has made mistakes with us. For example, was it was it Blackburn when we should have had that Stonewall penalty and he just didn't give it? So... I think that he's got to be on top form and really thinking about whatever decision he makes. And his officials need to back him up. Or if the officials disagree with what he says, so if we should have a penalty, but he says no, but the official says yes, I think he needs to listen to everybody on Saturday. It's not just him that needs to have a good game, in my right. opinion. Good shout. Good shout. Um, very quickly, back in the chat... Um, Stephen Klotz is the worry for me is Ballard. He's on a list of yellows. Uh, Mickey Max is good show, guys. Ryan McCormack says, well said. Mike agrees with you. Mick Coleman says, as long as it's not Mr. Alice Band, we'll be okay with not in the way more are um, Roadrunner says, filming, can't believe what's happened. Got at the terrible pit of running my club that I love with heart and soul. Marion Trout says, yeah, brilliant show with the lads. Three points, please, on Saturday. Well, if it was a league game, it would be nice to get three points against him. But, um, Place in the next round will do me. Um, Las Palmas Matters. I hope the ref lets the, the game flow, but sends the black and white bastards off. Um, Conrad Lee says, joining very late. What a disgrace the day has been. FTM and laid back Jack said, Yes, our very own Conrad Lee joins just as we're about to finish. Well, well done, Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> um, Elliot and Elliot, Elliot Olison's put one in there. Says, Even if we lose 8 0, we should stay in our seats till after the whistle. Show the mags the main note. I don't think there's much chance of that happening. No, I don't think there's much chance of that happening either. Unless, unless we're winning, you know, one and two now, of course. But we're not going to get beat 8 0, man. Are we? I know, of course, we're not. What are we around? We'll beat them 8 0. 
Anyway, just before we finish, I'm going to put you on the spot and do a score prediction. Jack, what's your score prediction for um, starting here? Well, I always try and be realistic. I know some people are criticise us for being a little bit too negative when I'm giving some results. I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to get lynched and predict that Newcastle are, are going to beat us. I think we'll give them a good game. We might have a little bit of luck. I think. I think we might get a replay. Hopefully, one-one. Take it back to replay. But if the worst case scenario comes and Newcastle do beat us, if we make it competitive, I'm sure all of our fans will will be okay with that. If we can give them a right good game and we lose, like say one nil, two nil, two one. Something like that. As long as we make them play and make them work hard for the result, and it's not a battering. I think Sunderland fans. Are, uh, I'm not saying we'll, we'll we'll be happy. We'll all be upset, but you can take it a bit more than if you get battered and you lose in the wrong way. I certainly can. So, yeah, one one. Get them back to St James's and see what happens. That will be interesting. That will be very interesting. See if see if they're there right there, bar and I will call us. It will be funny. <laughs> uh, Mike, score predictions for the weekend. Uh, it's going to be a 2 0 win to Sunderland. Um, potentially three or four, depending on how much they lose their heads after going down 2 0. But yeah, it's uh, it's going to be one of those. They're, they're on a bad run of form. And just in history, this competition, they don't do well. What's in, your bo- what's in that uh, bottle? <laughs> it's strong. I've just found a great countdown website that has uh, how long since Newcastle United last won a trophy. It's at 68 years, 242 <laughs> days, three hours, three minutes, and 10 seconds at the moment. <laughs> that continues over the weekend. What's your score prediction for, for Saturday? Can we do it? I'm going to go 1 0. It's going to be 89th minute goal. Chris Reed. <laughs> well, I, I, I wouldn't mind him coming on to be fair, even though he is a Newcastle fan. But nah, why not? We'll go for three nil, shall we? Come on, the lads. It would be absolute carnage if we scored in the 89th minute. <laughs> that would just be the stuff of dreams, but you know, we, we can dream, I suppose. And with Jack, I've gone for a 1 1 as well. I, I think we'll, we will give him a really good game, and I think they'll be happy for it to take us back to their place. I think, you know, so 1 1 for me. and you know, see what happens in the replay and, and see what happens. But um, that'll Mike, please the board. That'll please the board because that's more income. Well, we'll the money, money, money. <laughs> um, that's it. Just before we go, uh, Conrad Tanks is two on the sun. The casual observer says I'm doing a naked protest. So keep an eye for that at the weekend. Look out for the casual observer running naked on the pitch. Um, John Nesbitt says hard fought one nil win. Stead says a one nil from Ballard from a corner. Conrad's in there, FDM, 2-1 SEFC. Stephen Clark's is 3-1 SEFC. Um, Stephen Clark, again, I think the Mags will be full of themselves. I think they're going to roll, roll us over. Um, he's all, Casual Observer, he's, he's also doing a naked victory parade. So he's planning to spend an all day with nothing on. So that's, uh, uh, casual, casual Observer, can you, this, your little avatar's got a top hat on. Can you do totally naked except a top hat? Then we'll all know it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Nice one, nice one, right? 169 people watching. I think we've said we've smashed that hundred likes. Thank you very much. Keep on hitting it. Um, get your Scott Rickens again in, in the, the comments, and we'll, we'll have a look after the show. But uh, everybody got another game, just stay safe in, in real way. Trust, yes. Um, <laughs> let's just hope it's a good game. Let's just hope there's not much trouble. We know there will be, but um, just stay there and be safe, and hopefully, we can get a good result. Jack, do you want to say farewells before we wrap up? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it, Jacob, and say keep the faith. Um, and, uh, hopefully, hopefully everyone's relatively okay with what happens on Saturday. We all want to win, but um, yeah, let's 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 stay positive and uh, try and you know, all we can do is see what happens. But get behind them, whatever happens. You know, if you go into the game, shout and sing as loud as you can. Uh, and I'll see everybody later, lads and lasses. Cheers, Jack. Thank you very much, Emma. Do you want to see your farewells? Yep. Sing your heart out on Saturday, lads and lasses. Let's get behind the team, but most importantly, stay safe. How are the lads? That's the thing is, stay safe. And Mike, last but not least. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's been great. I think uh, Jack used Jacob's sign off, so I'll say what Jack usually says. If you weren't watching it, it'd just be a four of us just chatting rubbish <laughs> to each other. We'll just steal each other's today. But yeah, oh, thanks everyone for watching and uh I'm going to book my uh, hotel for Wembley for the Sunderland FA Cup final. So. Oh, dear me. I like it. That could be twice twice again in one year if we get to the playoffs. Um, 
like everybody said, you know, just stay safe when, when you're traveling down. You know, just watch what you're doing. I've heard there's some might be some mags in the home end as well, so just watch what you're doing, keep your wits about you. Don't forget to look on the top website as well, where you can still get that discount as well for the retro tops. Um, but thanks for watching. I say it's appreciate everybody who's coming at night. And um, hopefully, when we're doing the, the show next week, we're in a good mood and we've come away with a, a fantastic win against the rivals. But uh, until the next time, thanks for watching. We'll uh, we'll see you later. Ta-da.